Um, one thing you can deal with with percussion micing is the proximity to the microphone. I do quite a lot of uh, percussion micing quite a long distance from the mic. It's sometimes really nice if you've got a, a fairly decent room to get a lot of off mic percussion. It always sounds quite nice in the song. So what I tend to do is things like shakers and uh, tambourines. I stay fairly close to the mic so you get quite a precise sound. But things like maybe bongos or claves or um, any percussion you want to feel, sometimes with sleigh bells and things like that, you want to get that kind of Phil Spectory off mic feel. And sometimes it can get, can get quite far back from, you know, I've done um, stuff, you know, this far and further away from the mic. And you get, because you, you're getting the room sound as well, especially if you compress it quite heavily, you can get some really, really good, um, uh, good percussion effects just by having been from distance to the microphone. Again, you should experiment with it, get your engineer to give you feedback of how it sounds. Um, or just try it out and go and have a listen. Um, I think, you know, I've done, I've done records where you've, I've actually been, you know, 10 feet away from the mic, and obviously you've got mic delays to look at, but you can always move things around to get them to all fit, to, to fit with um, Pro Tools and everything. So, you know, you can use, just be using that one mic, you can be really creative with the sounds you can get from it. Uh, I've also, I've tried stereo pairs on mics as well. Sometimes it's nice if you want to, Rather than do automate on the desk, um, you might want to actually do a live, like cross pairing, so you can actually do some percussion that goes across the stereo. Um, things like spring drums, or if you want, want a little shake apart that kind of like that drifts across the stereo, you can actually go across a stereo pair of mics, and it's uh, it's uh, you know it's a much more natural way of doing it, and you can actually time it up with the track. And so a stereo pair is a good option. Uh, I tend not to use a lot of room micing. On percussion, but sometimes the only time I tend to use it is for hand claps. Maybe you get you know get everybody quite close on mic doing hand claps, but also have another mic six ten feet away, heavily compressed and uh, picking up some of the room sound. Um, we've done stuff before where everyone's been really close on mic in quite a dry room, but with the doors open, with another mic out in the corridor, and you know heavily compressed that, and, you, and you've got that sort of uh, you just get that bit of that bit of extra whack from the from the hand claps. But um, so really, but you know, I think the key with percussion is to keep it really simple, keep the mic in simple, and uh, there's a lot you can do afterwards as well with EQ wires and plugins to uh, to alter the sound. But um, but in general, tambourine shakers fairly close on mic, um, other hand percussion maybe a little bit off mic. Um, well, just I'll just show you a little bit of um, what you can do with a, a set of bongos as well.